Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I wanted to do a little bit of a product review, but more so, I wanted to solve a mystery. The mystery that is Arteza watercolor paper. So a lot of you are familiar with the brand Arteza. They have been very gracious with sending out supplies for different YouTubers. Uh, different art youtubers to try it here on YouTube and review um, they are they are very generous with sending out supplies and I have been lucky enough to be sent supplies in the past and I do have some reviews on some of those supplies and when they contacted me more recently I was on the fence about reviewing any more supplies just because I feel like I am still experimenting with what I have been sent and uh, just kind of parsing out what I feel like I would recommend for artists uh, especially similar to myself and I am actually considering putting together a separate video of kind of all the supplies I have tried and kind of ranking them of what I would definitely recommend versus what I would maybe have you pass on if you are an artist very similar to me or do art very similar to what I do. And if you're new here, I am a primarily watercolor artist. And so what I have here in front of me is watercolor paper. What made me actually say yes to doing this review more recently is that a lot of these supplies are brand new to the site or at least newer products that I hadn't seen previously when other supplies had been sent to me, other watercolor supplies. So I had actually been sent, this is one of the first supplies I was sent uh, by Arteza that is the premium watercolor paper. There's a wide range of new supplies and when I was trying to figure out what I wanted to review for you guys, I was interested in this brand new 100% cotton watercolor paper since I have been wanting to work more with cotton. It definitely works different. It's definitely a more premium feel. But when I was looking at the site to find this paper that I had seen a couple other artists review, I realized that there was actually quite a variety of different papers that are now available on their site. And to be honest, I got a little confused about what all these different kinds of papers are because they all seem to be different. And I wanted to really look at them in person and show you guys and kind of create a little bit of a watercolor paper guide for Arteza since I feel like there is not as much information online and on their website it's a little confusing because a lot of these are cold press but some I guess all of these are cold press actually I think they only have cold press paper some are cotton, some appear to be not cotton, which is likely wood pulp, and some are dual-sided, some aren't, but have the availability in dual-sided. I didn't get every single watercolor paper. I ended up passing on the children's watercolor paper and I believe the spiral-bound sketchbooks, I think is what they're called. But I did want to get a few varieties Mostly this particular one that does not appear to be cotton, but is apparently a nicer version of the premium, which is a little confusing and I'm not really sure why there are two different wood pulp versions. Um, and then there is this sketchbook, uh, they call it just a watercolor book, that has seemingly dual-sided watercolor paper that is a completely different sizing so this seems to be an even different watercolor paper and so I figured I would take you guys along and we would experiment with these papers and really give you a good idea of what you might want to be getting if you want to get watercolor paper from Arteza because they do have a, a variety but that's a little confusing when you're trying to buy things online if you're not really sure what you are looking for or what you're even looking at for the products. 
So I'm just gonna start kind of working my way through and showing you these different papers and I'm gonna do a little bit of testing on the papers as well and show you the differences in the products and my sort of initial thoughts. First up, we have the initial watercolor paper that was sent to me by Arteza. This is their premium uh, watercolor paper. It is acid-free, cold press, uh, and it is a sort of pad like most of these are actually, where they are glued at the very top. You can see I've used some of this paper. To be honest, I don't really like this paper. Mostly cosmetically, I don't like the sort of manufactured texture of it. I, it's really hard for me to get over that when I'm using this paper, and so it really isn't something I gravitate toward. I like something that has a little bit of a more natural texture to it. I'm not a huge fan of this. So next up, I'm actually going to talk about the expert version of this paper pad. So this is the main reason I really wanted to do this uh, comparison or review is because I am confused as to why there are two different versions seemingly lesser quality versus better quality is what I'm assuming just based on this being called premium and it doesn't even have any metallic on it, whereas this one is quite shiny and has the expert label. The other products they have labeled as expert, I do enjoy a lot more, so I think that is more the range for an artist like me that works full time. So this is a similar kind of pack that you would get, 32 sheets, you get two to a pack typically when you're buying them on their website, and it is cold press, acid free, glue bound, just like the other one, but it is apparently dual sided. So that's a little bit new. Um, it's the same size. I think all of these paper pads are nine by 12, but I am confused as to why there is an expert wood pulp and an expert cotton paper. Again, I'm only assuming these are wood pulp papers just because the more affordable papers that are not cotton are typically made out of wood pulp that doesn't make them any less good for creating artwork. I actually use a lot of wood pulp paper. It is more inexpensive, but there are kind of pros and cons to cotton versus wood pulp. There's a lot of videos out there. If you wanna search for them, feel free. Just looking at it and feeling this has a much nicer, uh, not as mechanical <laughs> in texture to it um, that I think I'm going to prefer. Uh, it feels like the backs are not the same texture. Uh, I'm wondering why they call it dual sided if it is not the same texture. I think, oh, I see. This seems to have a smooth side to it. I'm not really sure why that would be with a cold press paper. So I'm a little confused, but we'll test both sides with this when we get to the sort of demonstration testing point in the video. Let's keep with the paper pads. Um, this is the 100% cotton paper. And uh, another reason I wanted to do this comparison is both of these papers are labeled expert. And I think that can be a little confusing for consumers. And I know in one other art review, I saw that they were sent the expert cotton paper and when they were talking about how much they liked it, which is good, they mentioned to their viewers that they should get the expert watercolor paper. Problem with that is there's two different ones. Uh, and so it's really important to know the difference between these. This one appears to be cotton. There's also a lot less paper there. And I believe you only get one instead of two pads of this when you're buying them. So it ends up being, um, I don't know the exact prices. I can maybe put them on the screen, but uh, this ends up being a lot more expensive. You get less, but it is supposedly higher quality because it is cotton paper and that's just more expensive to produce as well. And so again, this is glued at the very top and 
acid free cold press just like the other ones um, it says mold made I'm actually not too familiar with what that means I'm sure a lot of you out there are familiar but the main difference is this is cotton paper and just by feeling it it definitely feels like cotton paper to me I typically use B paper company cotton paper and another big reason I wanted to try this is because the only size I am able to get at my local Michaels for the B watercolor paper is a six by nine and for my animal artist collective pieces I've been trying to use exclusively cotton papers for those pieces so that the originals that are being sold are just a little bit of a higher quality and I've been wanting to do something a little bit bigger on cotton paper and this is a 9 by 12 so I'm looking forward to hopefully enjoying this and using it for some pieces in the future for our animal artist collective also a pretty nice texture it's a little bit more manufactured looking to me than the last one but there's more texture to it um, which if that's something you're interested in that is fantastic um, there's a slight texture on the back however this does not say that it uh, is a dual-sided paper I know that they do have a version that is dual-sided I didn't want to get a million pads of paper to test out so I only got this one but I do know they have a dual sided in the cotton paper so be on the lookout for that if that's something you're interested in I don't think unless it's a sketchbook I don't really I'm not that interested in having dual sided cotton paper most of these their paintings gonna be on the front I want to sell the original and the back is sort of not helpful for me uh, because ideally it would be in a frame of the person that has purchased the original painting and then lastly we have this uh, I call it a sketchbook but they do have separate sketchbooks that are labeled sketchbook that are uh, spiral bound this is a hardbound book um, they call it a watercolor book on their site and this has 64 pages, so you get quite a lot of paper here. It is 110 pound, which is uh, not quite as thick as the other papers. It is 230 GSM, and it also appears to have the sort of double-sided quality to it, uh, smooth and textured. So I'm assuming this is gonna be very similar to that other paper where I don't know if I'm gonna like the smooth side or how that's gonna react. This has a really nice, high quality feel to it. It's sort of, uh, I think they call it linen, natural linen bound. It is bound on the side here and there's a little bookmark that comes with it that's sewn in. And it is hardcover, which I really like um, when I want a nice sketchbook. I do feel like this is a higher quality kind of sketchbook especially if you want to bring it along with you and look a little fancier they do have different sizes of these I believe there's a landscape one and there's smaller ones I wanted to get the larger one just to see how how nice it looked and um, test it out with just a little bit more paper to play around with and be able to create a little bit larger pieces if I wanted to and it appears as though the way they've created the sections uh, I'm really bad with book binding terminology but uh, the each of these sections that is sewn in is textured on one side and smooth on the backs which means as you go through you have texture smooth and then we have another texture, smooth, smooth, texture, texture, smooth, smooth. Interesting. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of that. Um, I would prefer all of, you know, say this side be textured with the smooth being on the back. Again, I mentioned I'm not really all that interested in the smooth side in general just because I do like a more textured watercolor paper and I'm not sure how this is manufactured for it to have textured and smooth paper. So I'm not really sure what they mean by it being dual sided. Typically dual sided I've noticed is the same texture on both sides. 
um, with the same sizing and treatment to the watercolor paper so that your watercolors work on it well. So I'm not sure if it's treated the same on the smooth side. That might not bother you, um, but that is something that I'm a little frustrated that I can't just stick to, you know, this, the same side going forward. I'm likely, if I don't like the smooth side, I will likely be skipping whole kind of pages and having two pieces next to each other and then having maybe nothing and then a piece, yeah. I'm not sure. We're gonna, we're gonna test it out. And with that, let's get straight into testing these papers. So I went ahead and cut a roughly five by seven inch sheet of each of these papers and went ahead and labeled the bottoms and then created a little bit of a sort of swatch sheet so that I could test out three different areas. I wanted to test out different brands. So that means a professional line of watercolors, what I typically use more often than not a student or craft version of watercolors, which I do use on occasion, and the Arteza watercolor, uh, specifically the tube watercolors that they have sent me. In the second section, I decided to do different kinds of techniques. This includes an even wash, gradient, layering, wet in wet technique, wet on dry, and dry on dry. At the very bottom portion of each of these papers, I also really wanted to test out different types of wet media. A liquid watercolor, so another professional line that is the Dr. PH Martin's liquid watercolors. The second is a gouache. I also have watercolor brush pens. I know that these have been very popular in recent years. And then lastly, I have watercolor pencils, which I also don't use a ton, but I want to know how well they're going to be able to perform on any of these papers. So I figured this was really useful information for everybody who is checking out this video and trying to figure out which of these papers is best for them. And you might not use traditional watercolors from a tube or a pan and want to know how well your supplies work with these papers. So I figured we would just sort of speed through the painting process for all of these because I know a lot of what you guys want to see are the results and my final thoughts. So I figured we would just kind of sweep through these and show you kind of how I did them at a high speed and then we can talk about it. I also wanted to take this time and explain a little bit more about the links to the products down below. Hopefully, by the end of this video, you will have a much better idea of which paper to get, if any, based on the kind of art you do or what your individual needs are. I also have a 10% coupon code from Arteza down below if and only if you really feel called to make a purchase with them. The code is good through May, and those are all affiliate links in the description, which means at no extra cost to you, I just get a tiny little commission off of any purchase made. This doesn't mean I was paid to make this video, just sent free supplies that I picked out to review and hopefully enjoy. We'll see. I spent a lot of time thinking about how I wanted to swatch everything out and really show you as much information as possible for a lot of different mediums, and a lot of different techniques. If I missed something, whether it be a technique or a way of painting and using watercolor paper, please let me know down below and leave a comment with your suggestion for future reviews so that I can make sure to add in as much detail as is needed for buyers to be able to be informed. Like I mentioned, I was just so curious about these papers, so I may have gone a little overboard with this review. I did go ahead and add in just a couple little extra tests as I was testing things out. And one of them was the watercolor brush pens. Since the two middle papers I used, which were the premium 
watercolor book and the non-cotton expert watercolor paper. Both seem to not have a very good reaction and didn't really blend out. The watercolor brush pen ink as well as the initial premium pad as well as the cotton pad and I thought that was really interesting so you'll see that there's a couple little extra swatches above those and I'll discuss those a little bit further when I get to the individual paper reviews but I did add a few extra little swatches up there testing out if I just didn't add water quickly enough or if I wait a little bit longer will I have different results for adding water to a product like that. And I did get some really interesting findings. Lastly, I also wanted to test out being able to pick up the color or pigment off of the paper. I know that this is going to vary greatly between different kinds of pigments, different kinds of watercolor, but I know in a pinch, if I do make a mistake on something and I wanna sort of erase, a quick way of doing that is adding a little bit of water and then trying to lift the color with a bit of a stiffer brush. And so I did test that out on all of the papers as sort of a last little extra that I thought might be useful information. And here I wanted to just do a quick little swatch. I just sort of experimented with some colors on the backs of the two dual papers. And I can discuss those a little bit more individually, but as you can see, they do hold the watercolor. I feel like they took a little bit longer to dry and it was an okay watercolor experience, but I did feel like the paper was pilling just a little bit uh, when I didn't even go over it all that much, but the end results looked okay. So I think for a sketchbook, if you wanted to just put a quick layer of color down, I think that would be okay on the smooth side of the papers, but I would be weary about doing full illustrations. And again, I'm just still sort of confused about what the exact purpose is of the smooth side. So I would be interested to find out if any of you have any information or if I hear back any more information from Arteza. And lastly, before looking at these individually, I did wanna go through and show you just how much warping happened with the paper. And each one had just a little bit of warping, which I mean, you're gonna have that um, where the paper does buckle just a little bit. I did find that the cotton paper was the best at staying as flat as possible, whereas the thinnest paper, which is the watercolor book paper, did warp the most, but luckily that paper is in a bound book that has an elastic on it that will help keep all of the pages flat inside of the book. And so I think if you're gonna have a thinner paper, that is going to be a lot more acceptable than another kind of paper. And here we are to the final reviews. So on top of me not liking the texture of this premium watercolor pad, I'm also not a huge fan of how splotchy the paint initially lays down. You can typically blend this out just a little bit, but it's not my favorite. The professional and student paint does look okay, yet not as vibrant as the other papers, but the Arteza paint just really didn't lay nicely on this paper at all for some reason. There was also a slight white texture all over the three initial swatches that's a little hard to see and I'm not sure if that's just the paper not reacting with the paint very well or what that could be. I ended up using more of my professional grade paint for the techniques portion just because I use that most myself. There is a slightly darker haloing where the pigment is just a little bit darker around every swatch and a bit of that texture of the paper comes through, making it slightly more difficult to get a very smooth line on the edges of your shapes. The edges darkening seems to be more pronounced with more water. I was actually surprised with how easy the wash lifted, which was a pleasant surprise. And as long as you don't scrub too much, the layers seem to stay put, which is really great too. Many artists want the pigments in their paints to travel a lot with water. This ensures more even and blended colors on larger areas, and the pigment just doesn't travel very much with this paper, as you can see in the wet in wet swatch. This can be used to your benefit if you want to control where each color goes a little bit more, 
but you'll need to manipulate the paint on the paper more, which could risk tearing it up quicker. The liquid watercolor swatch really shows off what I meant about the shape of your painted area, and unfortunately, it did not lay smoothly, which is what this type of paint is known for. This paper also did surprisingly well with the watercolor brush pens, as long as you add water quickly to blend them. As you can see with my second small swatch where I waited a little bit longer, it just didn't blend quite as well. I probably have the least to say about both the premium watercolor book paper and the expert non-cotton papers since they performed so similarly, which is a bit strange to me as one is labeled premium and the other is labeled expert. The colors of each brand laid down most smoothly and the texture of the paper was very pleasant. Not too rough and not too smooth for my liking. There was also no white texture that I could see. The pigment did blend out nicely in the wet in wet swatch and in general blends well. You do get a darker haloing with more water, but it is not as jarring as the first paper. Unfortunately, the pigment did not want to lift very easily and began to tear at the paper quickly when I laid down water and tried to remove the pigment. The liquid watercolor did lay down smoother, but not to its full potential. And the watercolor brush pens just immediately stained the paper and did not want to move at all. Here is a close-up of how the back swatches turned out. Here I'm going to quickly show you the expert non-cotton paper, but most of the positives and negatives are the same as the watercolor book paper. Really the main differences are that you seem to get slightly more texture from this paper visible in the swatches. Another main difference is the liquid watercolor looks slightly nicer on this paper. And the final difference is just how thick the paper is and how much water it can handle. Really, if you're not ready to make the leap into cotton paper or you just enjoy wood pulp papers, I would suggest either one of these papers and even both if you want to have a sketchbook that can travel with you and paper that you use in your studio. Unless your primary use of this paper is watercolor brush pens or if you know you're going to have to utilize lifting a lot in your work, I would suggest either one of these as a great paper for you to use for watercolor. And finally, we have our cotton paper. I have to say I have a little bit of mixed feelings about this paper, mostly because of these initial three swatches. Now, I will say I understand cotton paper does work quite differently than wood pulp paper, and it's a little bit of an adjustment. But I did notice that there was this strange white texture that popped up a little bit in the premium watercolor paper, the very first paper, but then very heavily in this ultra textured cotton paper and I'm just not sure why that happened. I feel like it has to do with the pigments in the paints I used in these initial swatches because the lighter green one, which is the same brand as that first blue swatch, doesn't have that texture to it. So I'm wondering if it's something about a particular blue pigment or something that is making it separate because I did cover these swatches completely. I didn't leave that texture there. It was very, very wet and should have blended out very nicely. That being said, all of my other swatches from the techniques and the other media all looked very lovely and especially the watercolor pencil. I feel like performed the best on this cotton paper. Overall, the texture that you get at the edge of each of these shapes is a lot more pleasant in my opinion than that first paper. And I will say that this paper is very, very thirsty, which is typical of cotton papers and is probably why my gradient ended up looking more like a wash just because I didn't treat it differently like I needed to. So here are all of my final swatches for all four of these papers. If you made it this far, thank you for sitting through such a long video, but I really wanted this to be very detailed and really informative for anyone 
anyone who's trying to buy these papers because there really isn't a lot of information on the website. And again, I've been so confused. I still am a little confused, but now I have a better idea of what each of these papers can do and how they perform. And I hope that this was helpful for you. If this video helped you out, please leave a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already and you're interested in videos similar to these and some that have a little bit more art making in them. The colors I used for the swatches for these are my typical sort of color palette. So if you enjoy these colors, you'll likely enjoy a lot of my other videos and artwork that I make. Thank you to Arteza for sending me these supplies so that I can share them with you. I hope this was informative. And if you are interested in purchasing any of these supplies, I will have links down below and there is a coupon code good through the end of May. As always, I hope you have a creatively fulfilled day and I will see you next time. Bye guys.